2022 general election is going to be one of the most expensive general election in the history of this country. Forget about 2013, forget about 2017. In 2017, Jubilee Party knew what they wanted because they were in government. They knew that they only needed to convince the larger Mount Kenya region that Raila Molo Dinga was a devil and that President Uru Mugai Kenyatta was actually anointed by God. So they only needed to employ the services of Cambridge Analytica to craft that message which was delivered to the masses. And up to now, there are certain people from those regions who believe that Raila Odinga was actually a devil. The only thing they no longer believe is that Uru Kenyatta was probably anointed by God. So that's the only thing they needed. And again, in Rift Valley, Jubilee Party only needed to convince the people of the larger Rift Valley region that William Ruto was going to be the next after President Uru Kenyatta. So for that to be achieved, they needed to get out in large numbers to defeat ODM Party. But in 2022, it's going to be a different ballgame. It's going to be a game of two things. Money and numbers. For those who've been following the politics in this country, this past week has been a very interesting week. And we can analyze and figure out the strategies by the various politicians. William Ruto was in Kajiado yesterday and later on addressed a huge rally in Kitegela. And earlier in the morning, someone posted, shared this video, which I'm going to play next on Twitter. And this guy was advising anybody who was planning to be in Kitengela and to use Boda Boda to look for alternative means of transport. Because thousands and thousands of Boda Boda from Kitengela town had actually been hired and booked to attend or to join the Ruti president William Samoy Ruto in Kajiado. So he shared a video of thousands and thousands of Boda Boda heading to his heading to Kajiado by a senior. So according to the gentleman, this border border were paid 1,000 each. And then all of them had their motorbikes fueled in at least three petrol stations in Kajiado. Now that shows the seriousness on how money is going to be used to influence the politics of numbers. And when the duty president landed later landed in Kajado town, accompanied by this huge convoy of motorbikes all the way from Kajado. The town came to a standstill. Kuna watu wanatutisha. Na watu wanatutisha ati Ati wako na system Na mimi niliwaambia Tuko na mungu Na tuko na wananchi Ati tuko na nani Ati tuko na nani Ati tuko na nani Alafu tuko na hey. Sasa wakuje na system Wakuje na deep state Sisi tuko tayari tunawaongojea. Tunawaongojea na Mungu na wananchi. While that was happening, Musalia Mudavadi was also in Western Kenya, Kakamega County to be precise. And Mudavadi also pulled a huge crowd in Kakamega. So which tells you that it's going to be a game of numbers. Waibo, tulipotoka kule Hawa viongozi wetu, Malala, Bishop, 
Sahula wale ambao wanatoka eneo hii ya Kakamega wakasema itakuwa ni kosa tutoke tu kwa kanisa bila kusalamia watu kwa hivyo tukasema ni lazima tuchukue hata dakika tano tuseme hamjambo sasa nataka niwaambie ni sema mambo yangu Kwanza ya kwanza mimi natafuta kiti cha president of Kenya kule kwa kanisa na nimesema kwamba yule ambaye ataongoza Kenya tukienda mbele ni lazima awe mtu ambaye ataunda serikali ana ile ambayo italenga kurekebisha uchumi wa Kenya kile kile ni kera ni kuona wanasiasa wanapiga domo 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 And for those who also followed Raila Molodinga, he had a successful event in Taita Taveta, a huge rally in Msambweni in Kwale, and finally another mega rally in Mombasa town. Now from the events of the past week by those three key presidential candidates we can now analyze the strategies which they are likely to use moving forward Let's start with the duty president William Samoei Ruto William Ruto is currently a front runner for the presidency in 2022 and his strategy is very clear Number one, the duty president is going to use the church He's hoping and believing that the church in Kenya can actually influence people to vote for him. Let us wait and see how that's going to pan out. Because in the last election, they also did the same. In 2010 referendum, the duty president effectively used the church to In 2010, the duty president effectively used the church and managed to get 30% of the votes courtesy of the church. We lead this time around successfully rallying the church around his bid. So that's that's one thing, that's one strategy is going to use. The second strategy which the duty president is going to use and is is actually using it very effectively is the youth. The duty president is well aware that someone like uh, Raila Odinga has a history, a reform credentials. And there are people who learned the history of this country. There are people you can tell that Matiba was castrated in police cells and the guy can shed tears there are people in this country you can tell that uh, in this country before you could not even own a motorbike not even a motorbike a radio a stereo radio or even a bicycle my dad used to have a bicycle and it used to have a permit so that there are people you can tell those stories there are people you can tell that previously in these years in this country you could not even talk politics kwa baraza so most of the, those people are likely to vote for Raila Odinga but there's a generation which has nothing which don't want to hear anything about reforms liberations and the rest 
This generation only wants to see money, easy life on their table. And this is the generation which, is, which, is, which are actually adoring people like Hassan Joho. Because such as Hassan Joho can put on well, can dance, you know. They are the people who the deputy president is targeting. He believes that these people, he can sway them. These are the people you tell that for us, Sisi Tunataka, nini, 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 and they follow. So the deputy president is targeting these youths. And he segmented them, if you've been following him. There's a, a generation which is hosting in Karen. And these people are the guys with the dress, people like Bahati. And when Bahati is there, you'll always see the Embakasi member of parliament. Embakasi West member of parliament coming there with the, with the, hair, with the hair plated. So many of them, you see, so many of them, that kind of generation. And then there is this border border guys. So the duty president is targeting them. And then the last group which the duty president is targeting is now the group which believes in Raila Molodinga, that kind of politics, that old kind of politics. But these guys, the duty president is reminding them that you, you guys are still poor. You are poor because these guys have been in power for a long time. So the duty president is going to use the dynasty versus hustler narrative. And that's why in all his political rallies, you see is is putting on that cap with all hustle matter which is resonating so well with the people but his strategy of campaigns is also very clear he's, he's holding political rallies then he's also holding events in church even if it's a rambe you know kind of, such kind of thing and then he's also hosting delegations at his residence either in karen or in sugoi so whether it's going to work for him I don't know. But from his past three events, that's the strategy which the duty president is going to deal with. And the other thing he's dealing with is actually this idea of system. He's telling people that for them, they have God. So basically, he's referring to church and also telling them that we have God and we have the numbers. So it boils down to the politics of numbers. And he's using money to get that numbers. The second individual is Raila Amolodinga. What's Raila Odinga's strategy? Raila Odinga's strategy is the Building Bridges Initiative. And something is convincing me that Raila Odinga will only declare his bid based on the outcome of the Building Bridges Initiative. And that's why when the duty president was in Kitengela yesterday, he was very clear to the people that because of COVID, the economy has been in, in a mess. That's the only thing we need to fix now, not Ileki to Ingenia. Listen to him very closely and what he's telling the Boda Boda guys. Munajua iko matatizo mingi. Hii changamoto ya corona imetuletea bala. Biashara ya watu wengi imeharibika. Makazi ya wangwana imesambaratika. Watu wako na njaa. Mkweli ya nasukweli. Biashara ya Boda Boda imeharibika. Biashara ya mama mboga imeharibika. Na ndio sababu hiyo tumesema ile ya muhimu kuliko mambo ingine yoyote ni kutatua shida ya uchumi ya mwananchi mdogo. Tunaelewana? Tunaelewana watu wakitengela? Na mimi nataka niwahakikishie hivi. Hawa wangwana wa boda boda wako na sako yao hapa si ni kweli hawa wangwana wa boda boda wenye sako hapa mimi hasla niko area na lazima lazima nishughulikie mambo yenu sawa then the other thing which i think Rayo Dinga is now trying to come out very openly to talk about is corruption he's talking of corruption because the duty president is using enough money for a harambes. Raila Odinga, just like Kibaki, don't believe in harambes. But the way Raila Odinga's message is coming out is not really resonating so well with the people. Take for example the speech by Hassan Joho on Ruto, raising money for Boda Boda, and how Raila Odinga message on the same came out. They were totally different. Raila Odinga's message was like, it's not good to have harambes. Your whole message was like, this guy has been in power. Then you think you can fool us that your movement is the movement of the poor? 
Your movement is the movement of the thieves of this country. And I must tell you, we will do anything possible to stop you because niya yako ni kudhulumu wa Kenya, my friend. Nataka munisikize kwa makini hapa. One, William Ruto. Sahi, tuko maka wa 2020. Amekuwa deputy president from 2013. 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020 ndiyo leo atiwasema vijana wanataka piki piki leo ndiyo wasema vijana wanataka baiskeli leo ndiyo wasema vijana wanataka wilbaro ebu turudie 2013 2014 2015 2016 2017 2018, 2019, 20. Hey! Your message was very clear that this guy has been in power for eight years. It's only today that he has realized that these guys don't have border border, these guys don't have bicycle, these guys don't have water tank. So, Relo Dinga is going to deal with the issue of corruption. And lastly, Relo Dinga is also targeting the youths. I'm aware that already something is picking up in this country called Nibaba. So most youths are going to be told this time around Nibaba. You know, even the, the idea of uh, Baba was actually a campaign tool. So because Raila is old, yeye anakuwa Baba ya Kilamutu. So that's something which is these guys are going to start advancing. So anytime from next week, you'll start seeing Nibaba. It has been on Twitter for some time now, but in the next few weeks, you'll, you'll start seeing Nibaba. But his strategy are only two. That's what I've, I've gathered. I've realized. Raila Odinga is holding town hall meetings. Whether it's ODM party or the rest, they, they first hold town hall meetings, like the ones he held, he held in, uh, in Mombasa and also in uh, Taita Taveta. Then after that, there's the rallies. In previously, Raila Odinga would have a rally, no, he would have the town hall meetings, then rallies. This time around, he's holding town hall meetings, and then not, not really rallies, but roadside. I don't know whether it's going to work for him. And for Musalim Davadi, his strategy is also very clear from what I'm, I'm, I, can, I can read from here. Musalim Davadi's strategy is two. The first strategy is to consolidate Western Kenya, which I think Musalim Davadi is already doing. Yesterday he was in Kakamega and the other day you saw he was in Vihiga where Atuli, where Francis Atuli actually endorsed him, kind of uh, asked him to work together again. And I'll do a video on that because there's a very interesting political development happening in Western Kenya. The Oparanya factor, Atuli factor, Malala factor in Kakamega, Musalem Davadi, all those politics and probably Musalia, Moses Wetangula who has disappeared in the thin air in the thin air so unlikely to do that but Musali Mudavadi's strategy is simple consolidate western kenya once Musali Mudavadi consolidates western kenya then that's when Musali Mudavadi is going to go outside there to campaign of course we saw him in a uh, in a uh, muranga and his message is very simple that it's only him who can live who can it's only him who can protect president Rukinata. Basically, Musalim Davadi is still going to sh So basically, Musalim Davadi is still going to sell the pair, the safe pair of hands. I don't know what to think, but from my side, those are some of the strategies which these guys are using, basically to mobilize the crowd. So there are larger strategies we are going to look individually in the next video. But these are what I have gathered from the last two or three rallies these guys have held. I don't know what you think. Let me know your take on this and the next video i'm going to work on is five things which the duty president must do to be declared the president of the republic of kenya you guys demanded for that because i did one for Raila Odinga. you demanded for it and it's coming up thank you guys and if you are watching this video for the first time just take a second or two and click the subscribe button so that next time you produce a video like this youtube will automatically notify you but two things are going to determine 
But two things are going to determine 2020 general election. The perception of numbers and the politics of money. Thank you guys and please may you enjoy your day.